unvaccinated survey results. And <laughs> I love this. The first and foremost reason was concern about ingredients in vaccines. And that would be the, the purple, the tall purple. The second was conviction of um, ineffectiveness of the vaccines. And then I, I think this one's kind of funny. Intensive preoccupation with the vaccine topic. I think that would be me. <laughs> Anyway, and they also found that they're seeking alternative care. They're not doing the traditional MD thing because they have abandoned it or they're using it only for emergency care, which I think is wonderful. I'm gonna read these top 10 vaccine issues. We're not gonna cover them all, but at least you can see what I feel are real genuine problems. The safety ingredients are untested both short-term and long-term. Proper follow-up studies are not done. Doctors don't report injuries. They never compare the unvaccinated population with the vaccinated. There is huge financial conflict of interest in all of the agencies, the AMA, the CDC, the FDA, the EPA, and the IOM, and also insurance companies. Also, come on now, pharmaceutical companies and special interest groups contribute to political campaigns. You see, the senators, the congressmen, the representatives get all this money when they're running for office. And then guess what? They owe somebody a favor. That's how bills get passed and introduced. There's no financial liability for a vaccine manufacturer. Wouldn't it be wonderful to own a product that the government says everybody has to take multiple times throughout your lifetime, big money's being made, and even if it kills you, you can't sue anybody. This is, I believe, wrong because they are protecting a private industry. I want them to protect my industry, you know? Um, that doesn't happen. You know, if you, if you are in business and you hurt somebody, you are held liable, you will pay. They have no checks and balances. And I think that is absolutely unacceptable. Of course, they feel fit infiltrated into every area of society, the military, the schools, the workplace, the government, the medical profession, the laws, the courts, and our media. You won't see me on Channel 4 giving this lecture, guys. It ain't gonna happen. I've tried to get on Oprah, The View, I've tried to get on Larry King. I've uh, tried to get on the doctors. I have done everything I can. I have sent them. What I've done is I'll, I'll, I'll address 10 DVDs of mine and ship them out one at a time every week for 10 weeks, you know, knowing they're going to get it eventually. They're going to go, who's this crazy woman who keeps mailing us DVDs? And guess what? They can't have me on because it isn't good for business. Multi-billion dollar industry with 164 companies worldwide there's no transparency in the agencies in the Center for Disease Control, Control. They actually have their own secret data base about safety issues. They are the fastest growing therapeutic area in medicine, uh, passing up oncology, which by the way is cancer. I mean, why is that the fastest growing area in medicine? They're expected a 14% growth in the next five years. Last year they achieved $34 billion in sales. The growth is attributed to advancements in technology, which now we can bioengineer viruses in a laboratory. I call them Franken science viruses because we can bioengineer them. We don't have to develop and grow them on you know decomposing animal parts, although they still use them. Um, so it's 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 advancements in technology, federal liability protection, and of course premium pricing. When well, you have the World Health Organization telling everybody on Earth you, you need to have an influenza vaccine because you're going to die because there's this huge you know, pandemic coming, it's the, the price that goes right up. So, belief number one, vaccines save lives and protect our children. By the way, fear is the motivation. I'm afraid my child will die if I don't get a vaccine, that's what we hear. My child will not be protected if I don't vaccinate. Doctors do that all the time. If you don't give your child this MMR shot, your child could have measles and die, or a brain injury. In fact, how many of you know Jenny McCarthy? Jenny McCarthy wrote the book Louder Than Words. Jenny McCarthy has my DVDs, and I've met her in person. Jenny McCarthy argued about giving her some MMR vaccination. Get her book, it's amazing. She, she's one woman who knows how to argue. She gets foul, actually, in her argument. But they gave her son it right there in front of her regardless. And he had two massive heart attacks, okay? Regressed into severe autism. He is now almost fully recovered, if not fully recovered. But it's always that fear that they use Instead of saying, Mom and Dad, I respect your decision. You know, I want you, to, I want you to do what you feel right and letting you go home, it's always that scare tactic. Nurse Ratchet comes in to give you the uh, runaround. 
So could vaccines be a theory that's gone bad? Okay. Well, I like to talk about immunology and I like to quote Dr. Stephen Marini. You see, I'm not an immunologist, but I have heard him speak multiple times. He is a hero in the world of immunology. And I'm going to quote what Dr. Marini says about vaccinations and the science of vaccinology. He says, vaccinology is based on outdated medical paradigm called the me mechanistic model or conventional medicine where everything is compartmentalized in the body. This understanding started in the early 1900s and lasted until 1993 when we learned new information about the immune system. That's not that long ago, folks. Okay? Keep that in mind. He said immunologists were taught that the immune system was a separate compartment in the body, was isolated, and had autonomy. They didn't understand what the immune system was. They thought that the only thing that would respond to a vaccination is the immune system with no regard for how the adjuvants and ingredients would affect the rest of the body or the immune system. That would be like me saying that when I eat an apple, the only thing that's affected is my stomach. It's a very mechanistic way to look at the human body. But then again, that's what medicine is. You have your heart doctor. The heart doctor doesn't look at what's going on in the kidney and the liver. He doesn't look at your diet. He doesn't look at nutrition. He just looks at your heart. Then you have your ear, nose, and throat doctor who doesn't know what's going on in your spine and he doesn't know what you're eating. He doesn't know if you're nutritionally you know, void, but he's the heart, you know, the nose, throat doctor. So it, it's, that's how it is. That's how it's made. And so they don't take a holistic approach to health. In the 1980s, AIDS researchers really advanced in their understanding of the immune system. And the focus switched from that mechanistic, um, compartmentalized view to a new view. The focus of science has shifted from a separate entity of the immune system to an interreactive immune model, and that was published in the Lancet Medical Journal. Also, the Pasteur Institute in Paris discovered that 98% of the immune response comes from the non-specific immune system, which is the Th1 arm of the immune system. And you'll know more about that in just a moment, but this is huge because vaccinations do not affect this part of the immune system. And this was only in 1980. And then their golden standard for measuring whether something was effective or not is the uh, measurement of high titers or high titer antibodies. And what they do is they look to see if you have antibodies to what the vaccine when you were given. And then they say if you have antibodies, then you know, you're, you're immune or you have an immune reaction or whatever. But basically, that's only one very small part of the picture. In fact, New immunology acknowledges that when you have a high antibody in the body, it's a sign of chronic ongoing infection or susceptibility to infection. That's very different. Do you agree? Yeah. They also, in 1993, came up with a new field of medicine called neuroimmunology. Remember, they, they discovered that it's really not just a little compartment, but they realized that the nervous system, which is what chiropractors have known forever, <laughs> is running the whole immune system. They're connected. Without the, the nervous system, the immune system is totally ineffective. And so the nervous system gets stress from trauma, toxins, and thoughts, and then can affect the immune system. So this is a new field of medicine. And they actually had to rewrite all the textbooks. And uh, since 1993, it is known that the immune system is responsible for many functions, including T cell production, that influence chemicals, that affect every part of the brain. They can make you feel depressed can influence ovulation, thyroid, and even direct the nervous system. Immunity allows us to adapt to life. In fact, it's one of the signs of life. And it's the preservation of humanity. Since the beginning of time, we are here today because for centuries, people had an immune system working, right? So in order to survive, Dr. Rainey said, it must be in balance and in harmony with its environment. Are you with me? Yes? Okay. University textbooks were rewritten in 1995 to reflect this new idea. Um, and I, I like to say if something is based on a false presupposition, then it's false, right? If I tell you that two plus two is five, and that's a false presupposition, and then I go and add it up and it becomes four, then I was wrong, right? Well, vaccinology is based on a false presupposition of the immune system and how it works in the human body, right? 
So the scientific method is a method of research in which a problem is identified, relevant data is gathered, and a hypothesis is formed from that data, and the hypothesis is empirically tested. This is not what goes on in vaccinology. This, there is something called scientific fraud, and scientific fraud, simply defined, is counterfeiting information or, or statistical data to maintain certain results. Sometimes scientific fraud engulfs unfair evaluation of results and altering effects of data to support the outcomes. And that's what's going on in vaccinology. Let's talk about how the immune system develops. Dr. Rainey says in the, in the baby when they're developing at five weeks in utero, that developing baby's thymus is open for business and invites stem cells to learn to become T cells and they direct the immune response. The TH1 arm of the immune system is developing, but it is suppressed because baby and mom can't fight each other. They have to coexist together. That's that incredible human body wisdom that we call a universal wisdom or innate wisdom. And this immune balance is influenced by what mother eats, what she does, her exposure to heavy metals, recreational drugs, antibiotics, and alcohol. All of these have a direct effect on the baby's immune system and neurological development. For years, it was common knowledge, you protect mom. You never give mom a vaccine. You never give her a drug that could be dangerous to her baby. But all of a sudden, pregnant mothers can get vaccinations, medications, over-the-counter drugs that contain mercury, aluminum, and lead. Dr. Marini says, quote, when a pregnant mother gets a vaccine with aluminum or mercury, it can disrupt the delicate balance in the newborn, I'm sorry, in the unborn child and lead to neurological problems that show up later as learning problems, ADHD, and autism, end quote. This is a picture that came from my daughter Renee's cell phone. She was due to have her second child in South Carolina, and she was having a water birth, beautiful water birth with a natural birthing center, but in the state you're required to go to a doctor to get clear. So she walks into this OBGYN's doctor's office, it's right there, Low Country Women Specialist. And it says right in the window, and this would have been, I believe this was 2009, it says, we now offer the flu vaccine. You know, pregnant patients can receive the vaccine, the cost is $20, we do not file insurance. Please ask your provider if you are interested. And then it says, you cannot receive this vaccine if you are allergic to eggs or mercury. <laughs> Can you imagine? My daughter called me. Oh my gosh, mom, you're not going to believe this. They're offering the flu vaccine with mercury to these pregnant women and all these babies. And, and, and I said, honey, take a picture with your phone, please, and send it to me. And this is the actual picture of, you can actually see the little door handle, you know, on the, well, you can't see it, I can see it. But this is an actual picture from that clinic. And she sat there and watched mother after mother go in and get these flu vaccines. And of course she said, uh-uh. I'm not getting that. Are you kidding me? But that just shows you how since 09 we started giving the flu shots. Since 04. 04 is when I it started. Born in okay, thank you. Well, see? I said, no, I'm sorry. No, no. Okay, so this mom says 2004. No, right, so we've been doing this a long time. And we wonder why children are coming out with neurological problems and all kinds of uh, metals in their cord blood.